Hey everyone, it's Dr. Hodges. I am coming to you live from my new office. Um, I just got done with work today and I have some paperwork that I'm finishing up, but I wanted to share, um, actually I want to give you a little bit of a rant today. You know, it's interesting. Um, I always try to keep my videos lighthearted and happy and very, very positive. Um, and I always know, just like at a nice dinner party, you don't talk about politics or religion. However, um, I need to talk about something that's a little near and dear to my heart. And this weekend, uh, my husband and I, we were talking about this very topic because I had um, read like on my Google feed a little article. And then he was like, oh my gosh, I just read something similar, um, like he had received a paper. And so I, I'm going to say this right now. Absolutely, everybody is entitled to their opinion, even though usually I think mine is correct, but I digress. But really, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I by no means want anybody to feel um, that I don't respect their choice to believe their truth. However, I was really surprised whenever I was um, reading in, um, and actually it was a well-known publication, um, not a scientific journal, but um, a well-known publication that there are now these little cards that um, you can buy. Of course, you have to buy them, five bucks each. And it literally says, um, if you hand it to your primary care doctor, so your family doctor or internist, and it says, if you do not have to take my weight, please don't weigh me unless it's medically necessary. And the idea behind that card was to prevent weight bias. And I cannot tell you how much of a nerve that struck with me. There is no one more that is more of a proponent for my patients. And actually, I just got back from a conference um, um, sponsored by ASMBS. There was not one person at that conference who does not approach the care of their patients without like with the absolute best intentions. At that conference, there was a room full of people that want the absolute very best for their patients and there's not a shred of bias with them. There's also a wonderful organization, the American, uh, pardon me, the Obesity Medicine Association. They too, um, they actually sponsor, um, it's um, like an obesity week. It's actually at the end of February. I'll be posting some videos on it. And one whole day is just about how to fight weight bias. But you know how you fight weight bias? Not by putting your head in the sand. I get so angry that number one, some doctors thought that that was okay. That if a patient comes in and says, oh, I, you, you, I don't want you to weigh me. Um, that if you weigh me, then this is some big social construct and obesity. It's all it is, is people wanting to put me in a box and and it's all about how somebody looks. That is so false. I want every one of my patients, or even if you're not a patient of mine, if you're struggling with your weight, I want everybody to be treated with the absolute most decency and respect. I don't want your weight to cause you to, to for it to affect your job or to affect the relationships in your life. But more importantly, I don't want it to affect your health health and the reality is is that there is no such thing as it being a healthy overweight patient now I also tell my patients I don't treat numbers I treat the patient so I might have patients that come in I look at their lab work and this is post-op and they have certain clinical symptoms but when I look at their lab work their lab work doesn't jive with what their clinical symptoms are. And oftentimes I might hear from patients, oh, um, um, I'm healthy otherwise, I just happen to be overweight. And I actually have told patients that um, as well because maybe their lab work looks fine. But this is the reality. We use BMI, that's body mass index, as a way to standardize your weights. It is not a, it is not a tool that we use to put you in a box, to um, put a label on you, that is so far from the truth. What it does allow us to do is give us 
concrete information so that when we're doing scientific research, we can stratify our patients so that we can give them the best care possible. So what is not a subjective finding? Um, number one, when you have a BMI over 40, do you realize you have the same life expectancy as someone that's been smoking 20 years? And that's if you're a non-smoker. That's not subjective. That is objective data. You, it, you have years of your life taken off even whenever you have a BMI over 30. Did you also know that when you have a BMI over 35, that obesity is an independent risk factor for 13, I did this 13, for 13 different cancers. That is not subjective data. That is a real deal holy field. That's a very real thing. What is also not subjective? Bariatric surgery can help to put diabetes into remission, hypertension into remission, um, sleep apnea. What is also not subjective, me just saying, oh, you know, I want to put a label on someone. I will have ladies that are referred to me because they cannot get pregnant because their hormonal access is off because they're overweight. They come to me either help them with surgery or with medical weight loss. And now they are able to, number one, respond much better to the medication so they can get pregnant. And two, they are able to have a family. So for people that think it is good that you do not address the disease of obesity, then what you're telling me is that everything that I've ever done for my patients is for naught. And that when these ladies come to see me, to help them have a family that they don't deserve to have a family and that they don't deserve to get the proper treatment which will enable them to have a family. That's what you're saying. You're also saying that the thousands of people that have their diabetes resolved from these for after they have surgery, it's, it, that's not a real thing. They don't deserve that treatment. Those are the things that just they it disgusts me number one but number two it is so disheartening now what is very true that i do agree with um i feel like we have done a terrible job and you've heard me say this more uh, often we've done a terrible job in the field of bariatrics of really educating our colleagues also the general public but certainly our colleagues because it is very disheartening whenever my patients go to see their primary care doctor and the doctor they're looking through and they're like Ugh, you know, your, your high blood pressure, just get better. You just need to lose some weight. You just need to eat right and exercise. And then they go on to problem number two. They don't really give my patients a plan, a course of action. They don't really do anything to help them. They kind of wag their finger at them, but they don't do something for them. They don't even, ooh, see, I'm getting all up. Let's see, my hair fell out. They don't do anything. They don't even give them a referral to go see someone that specializes in um, obesity. That's a problem. That's a big problem. Or they will poo poo the idea of patients having surgery. That's also, it's one more tool in our arsenal to help battle this disease of obesity. And so for the people out there, number one, that think that you should just look the other way and that not addressing somebody's weight is the way to address weight bias, I am telling you emphatically, you are wrong. Do you know how you deal with weight bias? You deal with it head on. The same way that we deal with any other thing that is causing strife um, in our lives and affecting our lives negatively. If you have a patient or someone that is walking across the street and there is a bus driving right to them, you know what you do? You pull them off the street, you give them a plan. You don't just say, oh, I'm just gonna look the other way. When you ignore your weight, you are looking the other way. And we cannot do that. And as a physician, the first part of the Hippocratic Oath is to do no harm. And if I look the other way, or if I support people looking the other way, then I'm not keeping up my end of the bargain. I'm not fulfilling my oath. So for my patients that are out there, and for anybody that's ever seen me, um, bothered in pre-op or in the OR, 
my patients will know that I will fight for them most definitely. And you do not have a stronger advocate for your health than my team, for the nurses in our facility, but then also the thousands of bariatric surgeons out there that really want the very best for their patient. Not to mention the thousands of doctors that are part of the Obesity Medicine Association that really, really want their patients to have the best life possible. I tell my patients all the time, I am not getting you into Sports Illustrated. That is not what I'm trying to do. And I don't really care what size you are. I'm not trying to get you into your skinny jeans in size eight or 10. But you know what I do want? I wanna get you to a healthy weight where your diabetes goes away, your high blood pressure goes away. You can now start a family. That is what you deserve and you are worth it. And so whether you're at the beginning of the journey or whether let's say you've had surgery and you've already lost your weight and you're you know, on the maintenance period, it doesn't matter. You are the same beautiful person on the inside and everybody deserves the same amount of respect. But you know what everybody also deserves? The best chance at a good, healthy, long life. And that's what I'm here for. So um, I guess that wasn't such a bad rant. Whenever my husband and I were uh, talking about it this past weekend, it was um, um, a bit more lively and more colorful. But um, this is my toned down version. Sometimes it is good to kind of sleep on things. So stay strong, you guys, and um, keep up the good work. You definitely are worth it.